Hey everyone, thank you for joining me today. You are tuned in to a live recording of Reverend Tashi's Talks. I'm your host, Reverend Tashi Campbell. Here's a timely reminder for our, from our main sponsor, the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are in the world, please know that a good God can do great things in your life. All right, all right, all right. It's a beautiful Thursday morning and the topic for today is something that I am, of course, excited about. Thank you so much for joining me. I see some people have entered the studio. It's easier said than done. That's our topic for today. And as I said before, I'm excited about this discussion because of the, the possible depth that it presents. You know, I think this is an important discussion to have because many people erroneously feel that once you are saved and sanctified and living out your salvation, you know, that it becomes like a walk in the park. But let's get into the meat of the matter. What are some of the things that are easier said than done for Christians? Interestingly, I did a little survey and so I got a few responses and there were some recurring responses that are there. So of course the list that I will give you, it's not an exhaustive list, but you may be able to find some other things that for you is easier said than done. But I have persons, I had persons who said to me, Everything is easy, easier said than done in Christianity. Every single thing, including salvation. I'm like, what? <laughs> but what are some of the things that are easier said than done for Christians? Well, these are the four things that uh, we will really be focusing on in this series. Waiting, praying consistently, love, and this kind of, I mean, the love that God asks us to love, love your enemies, love people who hate you and curse you. It's easier said than done for sure. And of course, there is the whole matter of forgiveness. So we will see how much of these things we can get through as best as we can in the series of episodes that starts today. And I'm, I'm sure that our listeners could come up with a few more and they have come up with a few more. But, you know, in this episode of Reverend Tash's Talks, we want to focus on waiting, 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 waiting. Are you waiting for anything? Are you waiting on God for anything? Well, I know I am welcome and I trust that this segment will be an encouragement to you. So waiting is easier said than done. Waiting is easier said than done. And hopefully later on, I will have two of my friends join me in the discussion. You know, they are to call in. We will see if they would be able to do so. So waiting is easier said than done. And I see Sister Charms sending a little message in the studio saying, oh, yes, I am waiting on the Lord for something. We will see. So everyone is waiting on something or waiting on someone. True? Yeah, I think so. For example, we wait in traffic. We wait in the bank. We wait in lines at the supermarket. Waiting is a familiar experience to every person who is alive. And to be clear, we are not talking about that kind of waiting today. Because when we talk about waiting for the Christian, it's a whole different ball game. A whole different ball game. In the words of Joanne Ellis, this is what she says. Waiting seems to be part of the currency of the kingdom for transformation. 
Waiting seems to be part of the currency of the kingdom for transformation. And I'm going to unpack that a little bit because I think it is very, very true. I totally agree with that. So let's see. What are some of the waiting situations that Christians find themselves in? What are some of those waiting situations that Christians find themselves in? Well, you could be waiting to be healed from an illness. You could be waiting to be delivered from a situation. You could be waiting for marriage. You could be waiting on an unfulfilled dream to come to fruition. You could also be waiting on a new job or a dream job. And in the case of so many of us Christians, you could be waiting for Christ's second return. And most people, when they think about waiting, they're not thinking about that at all because we are enjoying this life so much. But I want to say that waiting on God can be very challenging, very, very challenging. So how do we actually do this kind of waiting? Can it be any less challenging? I want to move right into the scripture, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. And this is what it says. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And this is the New King James Version. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, when the Bible talks about wait, those who wait on the Lord, the Hebrew word there that is translated wait can also be to expect, to look for, and to hope. And that is why in the New International Version, you say those who hope in the Lord. So the waiting here is one of expectation. It's one of looking for. It's, it's one of hoping in God. So to wait on the Lord, because sometimes people feel that waiting is a passive exercise where you're just sitting down hoping that whatever it is you're waiting on the Lord for will just come and drop in your lap and you have absolutely nothing to do. That's not the case. When we talk about waiting, we are talking about waiting in expectation, looking for and hoping in him. Hi, Sister Stephanie, are you there? Yes, I am here. I think I saw. Oh, well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, I want to, so tell us, tell us, is it, what do you think, why do you think waiting is so hard? Is it hard any at all? Oh, <laughs> well, I, I believe it depends on the situation um, that we find ourselves in whether being in christendom or not i also believe that based on um sociology or um the way that we were brought up then for instance mm -hmm. if we were brought up in a home where we were never told no or anything like that then mm -hmm. over time we grow to you know not appreciate or not understand the concept of waiting so mm -hmm. even when we get older and even if we were non-christian coming over into um christianity when we look to our heavenly father then there are times when he will say no he will say wait but because of how we were brought up we really don't understand how to wait or why we should wait your heavenly father you're the, the gift, the, the giver of all gifts and great gifts. So why is it that I have to wait on this? So I believe that it depends on the situation that is presented 
<laughs> presented to us then you know it, it can be challenging okay and i agree with you with that thank you so much because we're living in a culture where you know we get what we want when we want it and you are right if in our homes coming up as you know children and getting into adulthood we were never told no whatever we want we would have had you know we we, we get it then waiting is something that we do not appreciate and so it becomes a challenge so yes it would depend on the situation which i will hint at kind of later on as well in terms of because people talk about waiting all the time and some people say that waiting is is challenging but everybody has to wait sometime and there's some kind of waiting that we don't mind because sometimes waiting builds anticipation hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> but do what in your mind? Do, do, I I not sure if you heard the different situations that I gave. But do you have any thoughts on some of the waiting situations that Christians might find themselves in? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> um, I believe healing. You know, there are times when mm -hmm. when Christians do struggle with health issues that can be overbearing at times. So, you know, they're waiting on the Lord for healing. They're waiting on the Lord for um, direction in purpose. You know, we know that we're all here for a purpose, but what is our calling? You know, so sometimes the wait there. Um, we, we wait for marriage partners. And uh, after marriage, then we wait on children. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and also for some, they, they have this desire to, to own things, to have possession, whether it be a house, a car, land, whatever. So, so I think as Christians, we are faced with with a lot of things um, that that we we ought to wait on, and and it can be challenging for some. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's true. So. I was just at the point when we were talking about waiting on the Lord and to to I was looking at Isaiah 40 31 thereabouts and I want to just share with us uh, some principles and the benefits of waiting on God and then you know to kind of leave us with an encouragement as to what does waiting on God look like what should that look like, you know, if we are waiting on the Lord? So to wait on the Lord is to wait on his help, to put our hope, our trust, and our confidence in him. That's what waiting on the Lord means, to wait on his help, to put our hope in him, to put our trust in him, to put our confidence in him. And this is the interesting part. This is the principle as well. In principle, if we value the thing we are made to wait for, mm -hmm. then we will wait. And I think I want to say that again. If we value the thing we are made to wait for, then we will wait. Let me give you an example. Take a look at the, the KFC drive through on a Friday evening. <laughs> Now, <laughs> some people will not eat anywhere else but at KFC because they think the chicken is so good or whatever it is that they, they purchase from the menu. But people are willing to wait hours just to get served in a KFC drive through or if they're going inside. You know, or for example, there are some restaurants where the food is so good that people will wait for a long time just to be served. So the principle is that we wait for the thing that we value. And this is true too for relationships. Because if we value the other person, then we will be deliberate to exercise patience towards them, to exercise patience with them, to wait on them. Sister Renee, I think I see you come on. Are you connected with us now? All right, I'm not hearing her, but she's definitely here. Okay, so why should we wait on God then? What are the benefits of waiting on God? The first one is this. 
God uses our waiting season to refine our character. God uses our waiting season to refine our character. And then the second reason why we should wait is spiritual transformation takes place in the waiting room. You see, God is wise, you know, God knows that uh, we will grow and mature spiritually. We will be changed into his likeness. We will, be, we will become like him in holiness or he will make us holy in terms of how we live here on earth if we have to wait on some things. So that's when we will appreciate the blessings. So spiritual transformation takes place right there in the waiting room. And thirdly, our God is reliable. And he says that those who wait on him will never be put to shame. And that can be seen there in Psalm 25 verse 3 and Isaiah 49 verse 23. If we wait on the Lord, he will come through for us. Praise God. And then the fourth thing here, why should we wait on God? We invite unnecessary problems into our lives when we run ahead of God. So just wait. Just wait, no man. Just wait, pang God, man. You remember Sarah and Abraham? The problems that they invited into their lives because they did not wait on God to fulfill his promise in his own time? And King Saul as well made several blunders because he failed to wait when he would have received instructions from, from, from Samuel. So waiting is easier said than done. Waiting on God is easier said than done. But it is definitely possible and it is important. It is important. We are out of God's will Every time we choose not to wait on him, we are out of God's will every time we choose not to wait on him. And in the final assessment, what does waiting on the Lord look like? I offer a few suggestions to you. While you're waiting for that promotion, do a course or two to update your resume. Stay current. Learn the policies of the organization. While you're waiting for a new job, get your outfit ready. Get that outfit ready. Iron it and hang it up and have it there ready and waiting for that phone call. Read a few articles about workplace etiquette and about the organization that you're hoping to go into. While you are waiting for marriage, read a book or two on relationships. Attend a session here and there on love and dating in the 21st century as a Christian. You may know a lot but do you know everything? Improve on your interpersonal skills, your communication skills, and being selfless. And get this one, learn to cook. If you are waiting on marriage, don't waste your time. <laughs> you have so many things that you should be doing. And while you're waiting to be healed, live for God. Enjoy the abundant life God has given you in Christ. Focus on the character of God rather than on the ailment that you face and i'm closing are there any final words that you would like to give sister stephanie any thoughts sure um you know while while you give that reassurance of hope that is in um in waiting i was looking at psalm 33 and verse 20 that says we wait in hope for the lord he is our help and our shield. So, yes, waiting may be challenging, but we rest assured in his word that, you know, he will not disappoint us in our wait. And as you said, while you're waiting on that thing, um, get busy. You know, I believe that while you're waiting, get involved in ministry. Um, you know, get just read his word more, meditate upon his word because while through reading through meditation you learn to trust him and as you trust him then you're better able to cope while you're waiting amen thank you so much for that so in other words 
in the waiting room, strengthen your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. To wait on the Lord is to wait on his help, to put our hope in him, our trust in him, our confidence in him. And in the final analysis, it has been said that patience is a virtue and it's true. Wow, we are out of time. Have you been blessed? Thank you for listening to Reverend Tash's Talks live show. Thank you, Sister Stephanie, for coming on. And thanks to everyone who has joined us in the studio. Until next time, I'm your host, Reverend Tashi Campbell. Have a good one.